Hello everyone, how are you? Sean Ferrick here for Trek Culture and I am going to be trying to get through all that we know about Star Trek Picard Season 3 so far in the wake of the San Diego Comic Con teaser that was released today. So I am recording this at, it is my time, it is quarter past 11 at night here in lovely Ireland. I say lovely, it's raining outside, but hey listen, it's Ireland. And we are doing our absolute best to bring the news to you as quick as possible. There will be more videos throughout the weekend. I'll get to that now in a second. And while I have you, just before I dive in, we are at 220,000 subscribers on YouTube. That is incredible. Keep hitting those subscribe buttons so that we can bring the news to you extra fast. Right, let's get into it. Okay, so basically they broke the internet with the teaser that was released today. We're going to talk about the biggest reveal from the teaser Worf. We have been waiting for an image of Worf ever since it was announced that Star Trek Picard was going to exist, quite frankly, and it was said all along that if Worf were to appear, he would not be changed to look like the Klingons of Star Trek Discovery. Well, they were true to their word. Worf appears in an updated uniform. For the love of God, I'm just, I'm good. Links to my GoFundMe will be all over the place. No, but it looks fantastic. He has something of an updated Baldrick, but still has the logo of the House of Martok sitting on it. He's a lovely silver fox at this stage, but he is still very much the Worf that we know and love. Now, tellingly, I outrank him because Terry Metalis confirmed on Twitter that Worf is not a captain. Now, this could be because of the events of the Deep Space Nine episode, Change of Heart, in which he basically went back on a mission to save Jadzia Dax. You know, bought her a few episodes, that was nice. But Cisco effectively confirmed that be that would pretty much do away any chance of him ever making captain. Now, it seems that perhaps Cisco knew what he was talking about then. But that said, how amazing did he look? Speaking of different ranks and just frankly looking fantastic, let's talk about Commodore Geordi LaForge. Yes, finally, LaForge is returning to Picard. Now we've wanted to know what he was up to ever since we discovered that he was in fact in charge of the Romulan relief effort at Utopia Planitia on Mars. Now we do know, thanks to Dr. Una McCormick's book, The Last Best Hope, that Geordi did survive the events of First Contact Day, thank God, which has allowed him to appear in this season. We hear him talking about how his days on the Enterprise allowed him to become a better man and a better father, which is very interesting because LeVar Burton's daughter, Mika Burton, who is well known in the cosplay community, has hosted several panels throughout all of Star Trek's last couple of years, between First Contact Days and everything. She has been cast as one of LaForge's daughters in season three. So it's very much a family affair. Speaking of a family affair, we have of course the return of Marina Sirtis and Jonathan Frakes. Now they have of course already appeared in Star Trek Picard in the first season in both the episodes Nepenthe and I can never get the name of this one right, the last episode when we get the copy and paste fleet arrived. They seem quite serious so we don't really know yet what the plot of this season is going to be but Deanna really looks like she is here, she's not here to play, you know what I mean? Jonathan Frakes is going to be pulling double duty this season because he will be playing Riker, but he will also be directing several episodes as well. We don't know yet which episodes except for the fact that Terry Metalis is actually confirmed to direct the final episode of season three. Season three has also seen the return of Gates McFadden. Now this is fantastic because we haven't seen in live action, uh, Beverly Crusher since Star Trek Nemesis. We did get a performance by Gates McFadden in season one, part one of Star Trek Prodigy in the episode Kobayashi. Spoiler if you haven't seen it, terribly sorry. If you have seen it, wasn't it such a good episode? Gates said during the panel at SDCC that this is the best story she feels that Crusher has been given in the entirety of the history of the character. And now that is a big statement because Crusher has had a lot to do, although I would also say I'm delighted that Crusher is actually getting a proper 
meat and veg kind of storyline here because a lot of the time I think the character was underserved in the next generation and certainly underserved in the movies. I'm, I, I hate to say it but Crusher's role was relegated to something of an extended cameo in the movie so this I am delighted delighted to hear what she's saying. She also addressed the fact that there is absolutely unresolved issues between herself and Picard. I wonder, because I don't know yet, as I speak to you now, I do not know if Orla Brady has been confirmed for season three. If Picard and Talon, Laris, are still a couple, which I very much hope they are, how is Crusher going to feel about that? But it's been 20 years. What has Crusher been up to? We need to see and identify where she's been, where her character has been. Unclear yet if there's going to be any reference to the fact that we saw Wesley at the end of season two. We do, well, I say we know. It's said that Will Wheaton will not be appearing in season three, as will most of the rest of the first Set two seasons cast for Star Trek Picard as well. We know, unfortunately, Issa Briones will not be returning because Corey, it is really difficult to keep all of her different characters' names in order, has gone off with the Traveller version of Wesley. So we don't know yet whether that will be addressed or whether Wesley himself will be addressed. I suspect we will get a mention at some point. We do know, of course, that Brent Spiner is returning, but he was notably absent from the teaser trailer. Now, what they did say on the panel is that Brent will be playing a new old character. And technically, that could be a new data. That could be a new before. It could be a new lore. There was that vocal little snippet that we got in the teaser that was released earlier this year. And uh, uh, my two cents, it sounded like quite an emotional performance. So that's why I think it's potentially not before, at least, although before did have all of Data's memories downloaded. Who knows? It could, of course, be another soon. Could be an Android version of Noonie and Soong. Uh, I mean, whenever you turn around, three more Soongs pop up. So who knows? Who knows? We just know that he's back and I'm delighted for it. Of course, the man of the hour, Patrick Stewart, will of course be returning. It's called Star Trek Picard. Be a bit awkward if it didn't. He confirmed at the panel was that they will be visiting their original Enterprise. Now he said the original Enterprise, and then he said he'd forgotten that there was carpet, possibly alluding to the ongoing joke online about the Stargazer, the beautiful design in season two of Star Trek Picard that was of course lacking any kind of carpet. Now, joking aside, that tells me we're going back to the Enterprise D. And he did also say that there will be more than one Enterprise. So might we have a flashback to the Enterprise D? Might we have a flashback to the Enterprise E? Might we get an introduction of the Enterprise F? Of course, I am just theorizing, very, very hard to know. The season will feature a single villain who will be a female character. Now, this character was, again, very notably not revealed during this panel. My two cents, I feel that this single female villainous character will be blonde with pointy ears because it's about time Denise Crosby returned to Star Trek. And no body, no death. Sela is still out there. And if Sela is still out there, that could of course bring a little bit of a, a bit of a full circle story with Picard and the Romulans. Because that was fairly left dangling at the end of season one. So that to me suggests that we could see the return of Sela. We will have the nostalgia of having Denise Crosby return to the role and also, well, we need to address the fact that she's still out there. Nothing confirmed just yet. This may age like milk, but hopefully, hopefully I'm right in this one. Now, we know that it's going to release in early 2023. So that tells me that we know Star Trek Lower Decks is going to drop for 10 episodes on August 25th. And probably we're going to be getting part two of season one of Star Trek Prodigy after that. Other things that we know about season three is that we have a little bit of a casting bit of news. Uh, an, an English actor named as 
Ed Spaliers, who would be known for Outlander and Downton Abbey, and as the star of the movie adaptation of Aragon, has been cast in season three in an undisclosed role. Now, behind the scenes as well, we see the return of people like Mike Okuda, we see Doug Drexler, of course, and there's a lot of reference going on to Rick Sternbach as well with the design of what we're seeing on screen. We know that Jerry Ryan and Michelle Hurd are returning. They are seemingly the only ones from the first two seasons, uh, additional cast, we'll say, outside of Patrick Stewart that will be returning. And I think this is slightly telling because while the bridge of the Stargazer will be returning, we've been told that it won't be the Stargazer, that there will be ships potentially of a post-Voyager nemesis era. We did then see a shot of sickbay. Basically where I'm going with this is, are we gonna get some sort of Voyager link? Hard to tell. We hopefully will be getting a little bit of a DS9 reference. That was teased during the panel as well. And of course, how wonderful did Seven look in the Picard Command uniform? It was about bloody time that she was dressed up in that. Rafi was quite, again, quite tellingly not in uniform. So we will have to see what's happening here. Could just be, you know, she was off duty when they filmed the teaser, or there could be a larger story to this remains to be seen. There seems to be an awful lot of references to other iterations of Star Trek as well in Picard season three. Metallus confirmed that the music for this season will contain references to four different iterations of Star Trek. We're fairly certain that there will be references to the original series going on, which makes perfect sense. There's been a lot of nods to the original series, particularly in season two of Picard, but actually quite cool is the fact that musician Craig Huxley, who appeared on the original series in the episode And the Children Shall Lead, confirmed that he has been doing a bit of work with composer Stephen Barton on his blaster beam. Now the blaster beam was invented by Huxley and was used to great effect by Jerry Goldsmith in the score for Star Trek the motion picture. Think of the think of the compression charges from Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. It's that kind of sound. You know the kind of sound that you know they're going It's uh it's a big instrument, put it that way. There's a lot of references as well to Jerry Goldsmith going on only the other day on Twitter. Terry Metalis confirmed that Goldsmith will be honored in a big way in season three of Picard. Now, obviously having written the score for Star Trek The Motion Picture, that would go on to be the theme for Star Trek The Next Generation. So it stands to reason that we're going to get some fairly nice references to that theme. Now, if we're going to go and stick with the Goldsmith references, he also wrote the themes of Star Trek Voyager. Will we hear more of Voyager's theme? Would make a lot of sense, of course, with Jerry Ryan returning as Seven of Nine. We already heard a couple of lovely references to that theme back in season one. There was, of course, a nod to the fact that Deep Space Nine will be getting a reference, and with Worf returning, that would seem like a very easy way to do that. So, are we going to get a nod to the DS9 theme? But of course, who knows? We could get Archer's theme from Enterprise. We could get Discovery. We could get Strange New Worlds. We could get any of them. Hard to tell at this point. Now, there's only so much that I can do with the information given to us at the moment, so I'm going to call it there. So that's where we're at for Picard Season 3. It sounds like it's going to be a hoot. It is definitely the final season. We knew that. It's been confirmed. But anyway, the final season of Picard will be dropping early 2023. We're looking forward to a full length trailer. But at the moment, I am loving, loving the teasers that have been released. Now, stick with us on the channel because next up, we will be bringing you the breakdown trailer for Star Trek Lower Decks Season 3. I nearly cried at the end of it. And also, I think I'm going to cry trying to go through all the Easter eggs in it as well. Mike McMahon. We will also be discussing the Strange New Worlds panel, which is not too far away from the Lower Decks panel. More on that in our future videos. Anyway, for now, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I have been Sean Ferrick for Trek Culture. You can catch us over on Twitter at Trek Culture. You can catch myself at Sean Ferrick on all the various socials as well. I'm going to have a coffee. Say a prayer for poor Chris, who's going to edit all of this. You're all wonderful. I will see you very, very soon.